At last, bull and horse had been beaten, and Kutaro's pride restored. But pride comes before a fall, they say. Expect plenty of dark twists and evil schemes as we stride into what I like to call Act Five. And so the story continues. A short time ago, in a galaxy far from far away, with the power of Calibris and the might of the four champions, Kutaro had won victory after victory against the vicious Moon Bear King. More than half the moon had been freed, and the noose was tightening around the tyrant as his moonstone shards were taken and his advantage slipped away. Kutaro's deeds of daring do had become a beacon of hope, and the beleaguered peoples of the moon were on the brink of rebellion. The flimsy soul of a selfish boy had become the adamantine soul of a hero. Kutaro, may the forceps, <coughs> I mean scissors, be with you. Kutaro and Picarina were winding their way back to the wild waste when they got lost in a dense forest. And as dark clouds settled in overhead, our duo found themselves longing more and more for the light of the sun. We're not in Kansas anymore. Ah! Hey, maybe we should, like, turn back. Yeah, I mean, getting lost would be a total bummer. Okay, back to the entrance. But alas, neither one of them had the foggiest idea from whence they came. Ah! Taro, you're not supposed to chicken out. You're the hero of the moon, the big cheese. You took that bull by the horns and won, right? Surely Kutaro was strong enough to wrangle a couple of trees. Look. You've got a moon to save and a sun princess to please. So man up, kiddo! As if he had a choice. The only road was forward, or whatever direction they were facing. So our hero steeled himself and pressed on. The pale blue light of the earth, his only guide. Head! Head! Well, The Headless Horseman had driven Kutaro and Picarina right into the labyrinthine clutches of the Snackabosk. What's this face doing in our face? I'll do a little recon. That's one chubby pumpkin. Looks like a bomb ought to light it up. And then there was... Ah! What's it doing? Um, our light just rolled off! Hurry! Want me to light a candle? Even the candles are pumpkins.
Conversely, Kutaro and Picarina continued their trek through the dense and licorice black sugar shadows of the snacker boss. Kutaro fumbled through the murk, shredding sweets as he went. What a waste of good dessert. Don't worry, my dear. The stage crew will eat the leftovers. The who? Chocolate bars! I'm afraid of ghosts. Fine with crows, but ghosts scare me out of my britches. Uh, that's nice. But if you really want to thank us, tell us where the heck we are. Pardon? Oh, well, you're all uh, on the outskirts of Halloweenville. Cozy place. Two of the Moon Bear King's generals come along and did stuff to the local pumpkins. Did stuff? That's right. They made it so snacks sprout all over them. Huh. That explains the candy and cookie trees. Oh, I hope you didn't all eat them, because the townsfolk that did all turned into half of monsters. Just desserts, you might say. <laughs> what was that? Wolves? Ha! <laughs> Try dogs. General Dog. He's all that stops us from running for the hills. Whoa! Come on, Kutaro. Let's whip that puppy and take his Moonstone Shard. Whoa! They're out in droves. How are we gonna get past him? Look! Maybe we need to move when the fireflies do. Ooh! 
Eerie howls echoed through the Snacker Bosk's shadowy branches. Uh, uh, don't worry, Katara. I've got your back. <laughs> Our hero blazed on like a flaming pumpkin. No chasm to the glass here as he crossed past the dire morsels. He was going to get through this forest and put an end to General Dog. was a giant, uh, no, the giantest of pumpkins. This pumpkin made the puny... Oh! What's sealed inside this one? To keep the snacker mosque dark, someone had rounded up most of its fireflies. Just outside the bosque, General Dog stood watch like some great Stygian hound. You are Firewood. So this is General Dog. Huh? Wait a second. He's on a leash. Whoa. Huh? What leash? You know, maybe we should just ignore him. Yeah, let's go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, don't go. Do you mind? We're in a hurry. Whoa. All I want is for that nasty moon bear king whoa, whoa. to scratch my ears. Ah, uh, scratch this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we playing? Oh my gosh. Come on, Kataro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Please, just for a minute. No way. Whoa, whoa. Look at me. You know, I think I'm a cat person. Whoa. I am big and strong. If you beat me, you can have my moonstone piece. <laughs> We'd get that anyway. I know you love me. Uh, let me count the ways. Oh boy, she does. Could this quite possibly be the dumbest animal I've ever seen? What do you say, Katara? Should we throw him a bone? I love bones. I think it's safe to say his brain's his weak point. Give him a flunk! Woo, woo, woo! Woo! 
was a sugary sucker punch to the appetite. Their eyes started at the fluffy whipped cream snow on the milk chocolate shingles and wandered longingly down crispy, crunchy cookie walls until they found the sticky temptation of the candy windows. Their minds were still toying with thoughts of macaroon molding and Baumkuchen banisters when their eyes wisely decided to shut up and let them smell the darn thing. Oh my gosh, yummy! Do you do you think they would mind if we took a bite? We haven't eaten in like minutes. No, no, no! Must not eat delicious house. We need to get the moonstone. <laughs> I have you. What's that? Gazaro, your belt is spewing gas. Flawless oh, victory. <laughs> It was a trap. Our champ had stopped to chomp just long enough for the chimp to make a chomp on him. With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. After braving the Snackabosk and taming its watchdog, our hero finally met his match. A house of dangerously delicious confections. But try as he might to resist, 
Kutaro's fate had already been sealed by the belt about his waist.